Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Tasty Squad. I'm John and I have another review for you today. Today I'm going to be looking at Middle Earth Shadow of War, so let's get started. But before I get too into the review, let me just say a little disclosure that I did not finish the game. My save file got corrupted over 30 hours in and I did not want to start over because I have more games that I want to play at the moment. Like South Park, The Fractured Butthole, and the list goes on from there. So no, this won't be a review of the entire game, but I feel like 30 hours in this game is enough to review it. I feel like I've seen every aspect of the game. So I'm not going to hold up this review any longer, so let's just get right into it. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Where do I even fucking begin? Well, first things first, let me just get out of the way. And I said this months ago, back when me, Monty, and Cody talked about this. The name Shadow of War is stupid. It is a dumb name for a game. But despite its dumb title, the game is really good. It takes everything Shadow of Mordor put in place and it expands upon it in a huge way. Everything that was in Shadow of Mordor is here in Shadow of War, only it's bigger, it's better, and it's just a lot more fun to be around this time in. Let me just start with the game, how it looks, how it feels, all that good stuff. First of all, it looks fucking beautiful. Every environment's gorgeous, every character looks great, hair flows beautifully, orcs look as gross as ever, you finally have drakes, they look awesome, there's a unique design to the ring race. Everything in this game visually looks fucking fantastic. And I do like how there's new regions this time. Not every area looks the same in this game. There's now a forest, ice mountain, volcanic, city, all these different types of regions. It's almost like George Lucas did the level designing because it really does just look like a bunch of Star Wars set pieces thrown into place. Now, that being said, each location is unique and looks fantastic. My favorite one is the ice mountain one because... The last thing I would ever expect to see in Mordor is a fucking ice fortress, but hey, it took me by surprise and I thought it was badass. That being said though, the game does look great and all the levels look unique, but I can't help but feel that Shadow of Mordor looked better. And that's not me just, you know, embellishing my memory. My fiance was actually playing Shadow of Mordor right next to me on her TV as I'm playing Shadow of War and every time I happened to glance over at her TV I couldn't help but feel everything on that game looked a bit more crisp and just a bit more clean. Now that could be because Shadow of Mordor was yeah, a smaller dude, game so less objects to render them. thus they could make things look There's a little better because it wouldn't take as much anymore. memory but with that being said Shadow of War still looks phenomenal. Oh, it gets an A do. for graphics. Hell yeah. Now, the biggest thing is gameplay, and Shadow of War starts off kind of sluggish, actually, but it gets better, kind of like the new Ratchet and Clank reboot, because you start off this game not being able to do shit. I mean, you can't even do the counter kill at the beginning of the game, which always annoys me whenever there's a game and a sequel where you're not as strong as you were at the end of the first game because here it's not explained in a game say like Infamous 2 or Batman Arkham City where it explains why you're not as powerful and it actually makes sense to the plot that doesn't bother me but here literally you can't do jack shit that you used to do except swing a sword and roll that's it but fortunately, the game does quickly mitigate that because you are able to get upgrades quite frequently. And not only does it have all the same skills that you had in Shadow of Mordor, but now you can expand upon each one. Now, instead of just having the counter kill, you can have where if you do a perfect counter, you instantly kill an enemy anyway. 
so no more do you have to build up a combo meter to get that insta-kill. Of course, you can't get that right away, but I'd say about a good 5-6 hours in. It just depends on how all well you spend your skill points. That being said, they did change how the counter kill worked, which really fucking annoyed me. As you know, in Shadow of Mordor, it was strictly combo meter. As soon as you hit this number on the combo meter, you could do it. Here now, they have what's called a might meter, which helps and hinders all at once. And I do think overall it does help more than it hinders, and I'll explain. So, to in order to do special abilities, either insta-kill, you know, do the drain, or set enemies on fire and ice, or just to do the shockwave knockback thing, you do have to build up your might. Now, might meter does take a lot longer to build up than the combo counter, and that's where the disadvantage comes in, but the advantage to that is, unlike the combo counter, once you leave combat, what? your might doesn't disappear like your combo does. So you can hold on to having a full bar of might for pretty much ever in the game if you wanted to, which is really helpful, say, if you're just running from place to place and you run right into a captain. So in that sense, it's really helpful. So again, I do believe it does hinder, but it helps more. Now, the powers in Shadow of War, again, are the same, but you can do more with them this time around. I already explained how you can get the insta-kill. You can now ride drakes. The stun move freezes now, and when you do the freeze on the final hit, you can choose to make the orc explode, which causes enemies around you to freak the fuck out because their homie just got blasted into a million pieces, so they get scared and run the fuck away, leaving a piss trail behind them. So, everything is the same, but added onto. And that's really how the whole game feels. And that's why this is what a good sequel does. It doesn't necessarily change what the original did, it expands upon it. And I really appreciate how Shadow of War expanded upon pretty much every aspect the game had. Now, I feel they expanded upon the Nemesis system, which is the Middle Earth Shadow of Series' you know, crowning achievement, having such unique AI all throughout the game. Every orc you encounter could potentially have a personality. That is really good AI programming, and I do like how each orc feels like an individual. With that being said, and the first game, and this may not be Monolith, this might be how I played Shadow of Mordor compared to how I played Shadow of War, but I feel like in the first game, I never utilized the Nemesis system other than what was required of me by the story missions. This time around, I used that fucking Nemesis system like a motherfucker. I would say a good 80% of my time in this game was finding orcs, recruiting orcs, talking with orcs, taking over for just everything involving the nemesis system. It got to a point where I would have favorite orcs in my army because of how badass they fought, what they said, what they did, and you could even assign one of your orcs as your personal bodyguard. So anytime you went into battle, you could bring them there with you. And some of my orcs did some badass shit that I don't even know how they pulled off, but they did it. Not only that, but that you can do missions with them, missions they initiate themselves, you can fight them in the pits, you can talk to them, you can shame them, derank them, make them go crazy. I saw this one video online, this one dude deranked an orc so many times, all he could do after that was just yell, because he was so fucking traumatized. You, they really expanded upon the Nemesis system. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had so many orcs like feel like that's my brother in arms. We would charge in a battle together. I would fucking love them. And then what's so great about that is these aren't even real. These are, you know, 3D models in the game. And I would really feel hurt when they would die or when they would betray you. Yeah, they can fucking betray you, which kind of pisses you off. But the fact that just these grunt level soldiers all of a sudden are engaging me on an emotional level that most games do not is really quite noteworthy and not only that but you pick and choose your favorites you know you put your favorites as leaders you put the ones you hate as little shit grunts just to die and then it's even more badass when they prevail and then you notice hey 
you know, maybe they're not as weak as I thought. So, using the Nemesis system is really fun to do in Shadow of War. I even went as far as to every time I would take over a fortress, I would have my people infiltrate a war tree to kill them. It just became this whole big awesome spectacle of secrecy, fuckery, and stabbing in the back. Which is amazing. Now, besides the Nemesis system, the absolute best thing Shadow of War does is these Fort Siege missions. They are fucking awesome. It feels like you're really living a battle in Lord of the Rings. You get to pick which orcs are going to be your commanders. You charge into battle with an army at your back. Smashing into big fortresses with armies in there. You kill bosses. It's just a good time. Now like I said earlier, you can make the fort as easy or as hard as you want. Depending on how hard of a fight you want to take on. I, I did three of the forts. The first two I didn't really try that hard on. The second one... I had all my guys infiltrate the war chiefs, which when you kill one of the war chiefs, each fort has four war chiefs and then one overlord. My second time around, I didn't do three, I did two. Second time I did it, I infiltrated all four war chiefs, killed all of them before I even started the mission, and it just made it so much easier. Because each time you kill a war chief, it disables one of the siege fortresses unique defense abilities like catapults or poison walls, things of that nature. So, killing them does have an advantage, but if you want to just go balls to the wall, prove your fucking skill, charge into battle straight on with captains everywhere, war chiefs everywhere, you can fucking go at it. I wouldn't recommend it, it's much more fun to be secrety, but hey, it's up to you. Then after you take the forts, you... You know, you gain the region, and you just feel like you're really growing your army, which is the whole main objective of the game. Or at least I think so, but I'll get to that in a second. One of the minor things about the game that really pisses me off, though, is how many captains can sometimes be clustered together. There's been times where I've run into being surrounded by four or more captains at once, and it's just... When it gets to that level, it's kind of unfair, because you know, I'm just one dude and four bosses are coming at me at once. And I know people that play games that are hard are going to be like, Well, that ain't shit, play Dark Souls, you know, play this or that. Listen, fuck you. That shit is difficult. And a lot of the time, you want to take on these captains, and you can't. Or sometimes you're in the middle of doing a mission where you have to kill this captain. But then other ones come up, forcing you to run or die. And it just fucks your mission all up. And it kills the flow of how you were just playing, and it really pisses you off. But other than that, gameplay-wise, Shadow of War is great. There's great action, great use of the Nemesis system. Like the first game, there's collectibles to gather this time around. There's plenty of different mission types to do. There's quest lines for each different character. I finished a couple of them. I finished the Gondorian quest line. I finished the Shelob quest line, you know. So there is a lot to fucking do. I was 30 hours in and I probably could have easily got another 30 hours out of the game. I'm just guessing, but I would feel like that would be a very accurate guess. Now lastly, let's talk about the story. Which, honestly, is probably the weakest link in Shadow of War. I do it here, it gets better in Act 3. There's four acts to the game. I was in Act 2, I don't know how close I was to being done with Act 2, but with that being said, the story is just kind of all over the place. It's not necessarily bad, but it's it's really incohesive, so you really don't know which story is supposed to be the main story, because they don't even label things as story missions, it's either Sheila missions, Gondori missions, Nemesis missions, Bruise missions, and just so on and so forth in that fashion. So, I honestly don't know what missions I played that progressed the story, and what missions I played that just were in and of themselves. I thought the Gondorian storyline was the main storyline for the longest time, till I opened up the menu and realized I 100%ed all the Gondorian quests. And here I am, still in Act 2, so that can't be it. So it's just really hard to follow, and it starts out kind of abrupt. 
you start off. Celebrimbor made a new ring of power to battle Sauron. It immediately gets taken from you as soon as he's done making it. I'm not even joking. Like He fight makes the final hit on it. Shelob, who can now become people... I, I don't remember that fucking happening, but... Liberties with licenses, I guess. She comes in, takes the ring, makes you go dick around for a little bit before she decides to give it back. Then you get it back, and you're finally like, Oh, I can do half the shit I was able to do in the last game again, finally. And then that's the end of the Shelob storyline, so I really don't know which one's supposed to be the main one. It's really all over the place. But with that being said, and despite the fact that I did not finish the game, I thoroughly enjoyed the time I spent in it. And I do plan on returning again. It's just right now, you know, it's towards the end of the year, a lot of games are coming out, a lot of games I want to play. So I'm not going to get 30 hours in a game, only to have to start all the way fucking over from the beginning. So with that being said, despite me not finishing it, despite its minor story flaws, Shadow of War is still a hell of a lot of fun to play. If you have not played it yet and you like Shadow of Mordor, get it, get it right now. If you like Lord of the Rings, get it. Just If you like open world sandbox games, get it. It's a good fucking game. And I would say it's an 8 out of 10. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, maybe hit that thumbs up. Possibly even subscribe to Tasty Squad Gaming for all your gaming entertainment needs. If not, you know, tell us what we can improve on. We're always looking to hear feedback. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'm John. It's been good. And as always, stay tasty. Thank you.